Welcome to Innovation Best Practices, where every episode is specifically designed to help you sell more and make more from your innovation program. The best practices I share here are designed to help virtually any business with any innovation need. I want to give a special welcome to listeners in over 80 countries. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about um, Airbus, but before we do that, just to let you know, there's a couple ways you can uh, listen to all of this. Uh, we have VideoCast, which launched in January of 2015. All you need to do is go to YouTube and in the search bar put Richard Innovation Best Practices will be in the search results somewhere down the list. Click on it and you'll see all the available VideoCast available there. VideoCasts are especially um, helpful if you are if I'm doing an episode where there's a lot of visuals because the video cast is really a PowerPoint presentation uh, with visuals and the voiceover. So you can also go to iTunes to listen to the podcast and you can also go to my website i2ge that's the letter i number two ge dot com slash podcast to listen to the podcast episodes. If you go to iTunes please consider giving us a five star rating and review um, this is all about helping more people know that we exist because in the iTunes system, five-star ratings and reviews make a big difference. Here's the very first uh, review I ever gotten, and I've been fortunate enough to get a number of them. The headline says, Deep and Practical, Richard has always had different ideas and perspectives. His real-world experiences are so effective, these podcasts are showing incredible potential. P3, referring to episode three, has some very important insights, and I thank folks for that. So, we also have free apps for the iPhone and iPad at the App Store and for Android devices at Google Play. I love hearing from listeners, and if you want to contact me very directly, Richard at i2ge.com. That's the letter I, number two, ge.com. As I said, this episode is about Airbus, a pretty innovative company, and I want to share with you what's going on in innovation at Airbus because it's pretty interesting. A little bit of background on the company first. 55,000 employees, annual revenue of $40 billion euro, and a sales backlog of eight years. Wouldn't all of us business people out here like to have a sales backlog of eight years? Uh, they've got 11 international production sites and four assembly line locations around the world. They are actually the leader in marketing, marketing share um, in single aisle planes and in wide body planes. They have a 53% share in both of those with Boeing have a four, having a 47% share. So this is a big successful company that's looking to be more successful. So let's take a look at how they're seeing opportunities in the future. They're seeing uh, that there will be faster planes, probably that can uh, reduce the average trip by about 13 minutes, which will save 9 million tons of fuel and reduce CO2 emissions by 28 million tons. And they have a smarter a vision for smarter planes for smarter skies. So they have five smarter skies innovations, and the first one is what they call EcoClimb. And this is an aircraft launched through assisted takeoffs using renewable powered and pro propelled acceleration uh, off of a runway. Kind of think of the uh, assist on an aircraft carrier that a fighter jet gets when it takes off. I'm not sure whether you've seen, but they get um, the planes get connected to a hook, and when they're ready to launch, uh, a device in the uh, platform of the aircraft carrier helps it greatly accelerate the uh, plane so it can get to airspeed in the very, very short runway that it exists on an aircraft carrier. So that's what this is about. It'll help achieve steeper climbs and minimum noise. Any of you listening around the San Diego airport will like that. Uh, and to reach efficient cruise altitudes more quickly. So the first innovation is EcoClimb. The second one is what they call Express Skyways. This is, this is an interesting one. And if you're listening to this on the video cast, you'll see a visual that I'll kind of refer to in a moment. These are going to be highly intelligent aircraft that will self-organize. Instead of being given very specific uh, routing information and everything, the planes will determine their own routing. And they will select the most efficient and environmentally friendly routes. 
They will optimize prevailing weather and atmospheric conditions. And on high-frequency routes, the plane there will be groups of planes flying in formation like birds. And the visual in the video cast uh, kind of pictures that. Um, <laughs> it's an interesting, interesting approach. So op- uh, innovation number two is Express Skyways. Very interesting. Um, innovation number three is free glide approaches and landings. A free glide is where there's not a whole lot of engine power going on, and they're just gliding. And it helps to reduce emissions, especially over major metropolitan areas. It reduces noise because there's no need for engine thrust or air braking. If you do a lot of flying and you're on approach, you know that uh, you will hear occasionally a, an acceleration of the plane because they've dropped too low too fast or don't have enough airspeed. Or they're going too fast and they need to do some air braking, all of which creates noise. And they say this will reduce landing speeds, which will equal shorter landing distances. So innovation number three is free glide approaches. Four is ground operations. Uh, They see opportunities that after landing, there will be faster engine shutdown and shutoff. And they they think technology will optimize the aircraft landing position with enough accuracy for autonomous, renewably powered taxi and carriage. In other words... Uh, something that is a lot more energy efficient will actually bring it to the gate. Interesting. And the fifth and last in this Smarter Skies series is power innovation. They see that there will be sustainable aviation fuel options in the future. Some combination of electric, hydrogen, and solar to be determined. And this will allow for an extensive introduction of regionally sourced renewable energy for aircraft and infrastructure on the ground. Very, very interesting, including one of the things that they see is actually more completely embedding the engine into the overall fuselage of the plane. And if you're looking at the video cast of this, you see a picture where, uh, as opposed to being a separate entity hanging off the wing, it's kind of um, integrated a bit more. So all of that's very interesting. They also have talked about uh, some innovation coming in what they call the concept plane. And I want to run through some of those innovations that they envision. First is a configured wingspan that's going to be longer and slimmer wings uh, that will connect with the gliding that we talked about earlier. They think that there will be intelligent materials separately, uh, lightweight, smart materials that can sense the load that they're under. Uh, The concept plane will also include new manufacturing methods uh, to help reduce cost and environmental impact. Engines I've already talked a little bit about and that these will be more reliable and fuel efficient and they will be rear and semi-embedded engines to reduce uh, fuel burn. And again, if you're looking at this on the video cast, there's a a closer up picture of the engine actually being more embedded into the actual fuselage and wings of the plane. Other things are the fuselage itself will no longer be a simple tube. It will be a curved shape that provides uh, more internal space and better aerodynamics. Interesting. Electrical systems will get even better for continuous monitoring of overall plane health. So that's quite a bit of innovation at uh, Airbus. I want to give you some concluding thoughts here. First of all, I think as innovation goes, many of these ideas are very good evolutionary improvements. But it's important to note that when you take these as a group of innovations, the concept plane and the smarter skies, they could add up to a pretty dramatic improvement. In my sense that there'll be even more dramatic improvements down the road, things coming from suborbital flying, which is farther up in new propulsion systems. I will also observe that these innovations are all focused on the airplane itself and what it does uh, on the ground. There's not a lot of innovation that I saw in here that would improve the personal flyer's experience. Yeah, shorter flights kind of help and less noise and all that sort of stuff, but uh, don't hear a lot of innovation going on inside the cabin. So that's an observation. 
If you're interested in more innovation best practices, all you need to do is go to my website at i2ge.com. On the left-hand side on the menu bar, there's the DIY innovation training. Click on it. A whole bunch of training programs will pop up. If you don't see one that matches your specific needs, just send me an email. We'll be glad to tailor one to your exact needs. Here's what this training program is all about. I want to make you innovation self-sufficient so that you don't have to hire expensive consultants like me. Going through DIY innovation training will actually end up turn, uh, being a very big cost savings project for you as well as making you a whole lot more skilled at the process of innovation. I also have one of my six books that I've published. It's called Proven Practical Innovation That Delivers Results. It's available only at Amazon in a Kindle and paperback version, and it's priced below my break-even cost, so it's a hell, heck of a price. If you have suggestions, comments, or requests, I love hearing from listeners. Again, just email me at richard at i2ge.com. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at the most innovative companies of 2015. This comes from a very uh, broad international study done by the Boston Consulting Group. So it's a worldwide survey. They've been doing it for a lot of years. It's got a lot of integrity and a lot of respect. So you're going to want to listen to this about the most innovative companies of 2015. Some expected and some surprises on this list. As all of you know, I'm deeply, deeply appreciative of you taking time out of your busy day to spend it with me. Thank you. I look forward to reconnecting with you soon. And until then, please have a great day.